Y'all, I've been doing a lot of vlogging today, and I would just like to say that the, um, the last video, I'm going to upload it because it's funny. I was just ranting and ranting to y'all about how Amazon had not been properly securing my account and how it had been uh, broken into, and Twitter told me so. I do got to go check out my Twitter account. I don't know why that happened. But, um, and while I was talking to you in the video, <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, kind of what person, even if they did give to a charity, would give $300 worth of shampoo? I mean, who could use that much shampoo? It was a group thing that we were doing at work where you could buy, you know, like cases of shampoo or whatever. Oh, by the way, look at how good that little purse looks with the embroidery on it. The little um, tote that I told you all about. I'll try to link that below if I can remember to. I think it was called I Love Jewelry, which makes no sense that it had totes, but it's cute totes. Anyway, um, it was just so funny to me that um, we did have this email that came out and it said if you wanted to give to these children as a charity, um, you could ship it direct, but that the address was undisclosed. And normally, when you do that, it is fraudulent. And so, they give you a little warning when you place the or order There's, that you don't know the address and that it would say that and blah, blah, blah. But it would ship directly to the children's shelter. And I thought, well, that's where it's needed. Why ship it here? Then pay to reship it there. Just pay to ship it there and get it to them direct, you know? And so I did it, but I forgot. Who does that and forgets? I don't even, I, it was like, oh, this little squirrel was all confused. Look. Don't get in the road, little squirrel. Isn't this pretty? I know, it's so pretty here. Um, I always tell y'all that, but I'm just forever thankful. I never take it for granted, you know? Um, I've had other jobs that, we're not remotely like this. So anyway, um, but anyway, so you could buy a, a large amount of this at one time. Hey, and um, ship it in bulk is what I'm saying. And it was, you know, kind of the basics necessities that children need and certainly shampoo and body wash was one of them. So I did that. I think I did different size panties for both boys and girls or underwear for boys, he's for girls, and they gave different sizes, mediums, I gave all different kind of sizes, and then some sizes of um, diapers, you know, different stage diapers that you could do. And so I just did a bunch on any, and I did put it on my Amazon card, after I just got a debt. I'm gonna get back out of debt, because I'm gonna pay that card off as soon as that comes in, that order comes in. I do not remember where I parked. So I may do some panting, um, but anyway, I, the, that video was so funny. When I looked back over, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. Because, I mean, I was ranting, wasn't I? And it was me that did it. Ah, was the fraudulent one who got in on my account. I hope I don't end up saying this tomorrow. Or actually, I hope I do. On whatever it is Twitter's warning me about. So again, if you get a tweet, from Beth Buchanan, I think it will say Beth, BB Cano is, I think it, just like my Instagram. And, uh, God, it's opening. This wouldn't even, my keys wouldn't open my car this morning, y'all. Um, but anyway, oh my gosh, what a funny, 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 funny day. So, I am a little panty, always worries me, am I gonna make it? I'm gonna make it. So, I would love your thoughts on what do you think the best diets are. Here's what I'm gonna try, but I still want your thoughts. I spoke to someone, I think I told y'all about this, ran into her at Ulta, an old friend from who worked on our travel account, and um, I almost didn't recognize her when she came up. So I knew her face, I knew her eyes and your face, but she'd lost a substantial 
amount of weight. And I'm not saying that ugly. She would tell you that she did. I think she actually reveled just a little bit in the fact that I didn't know who she was because she'd changed. And you know, when you've worked that hard to lose weight, I think you would. I think you would. And I really wasn't positive it was her for about the first five minutes, well, first minute of the conversation. I thought, that's her, but boy, did she lose weight. And so uh, I think towards the end of it, she says, Bethy, do you know who I am? And she seemed smiley about it, like, you don't even recognize me. And I was like, you know, are Kelly? And she goes, yeah. And I said, I do, I have to tell you, it did take me a second because, wow, you're an inspiration. You really have lost a lot of weight. How did you do it? And she said, Beth, I did it through portion control. What's wrong with uh, the way we eat today is we're taught to eat platters of food where we should be eating like small amounts of food that uh, more often but very small amounts. And I thought, you know, when I lost the most weight and kept it off in life was the Hilton Head metabolism diet. It's the same thing. It starts you off with a quarter cup, which put that in a, a measuring cup and see how little that is of um, whatever it was for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. And then you do that for two weeks. And then two weeks later, you go up to half cup. And because you raise the full amount of calories at one time like that, your metabolism will adjust. And I remember thinking, so when do we go up to a full cup instead of half cup? Here's the bottom line. We don't need a full cup of all that food. We don't. When you do a half cup of vegetables and a half cup of fruit and a half cup of um meat and dairy you don't need full cups of anything and I lost weight and for three years I kept it off and I looked fantastic and I did go up and down the stairs a lot at work rather than the elevator is I would like take two two flights of stairs at a time but I had to do it a couple times a day and I got to where I really and I panted and also it was 10 years 15 years wait a minute let me think a minute 20 years ago so, hey, that's part of it right there. I was in my 30s, my early 30s. So, that is part of it. Your metabolism is faster. Uh, as you age, it does slow down. And that's why you almost have to eat like a bird. My mother told me that. She goes, it's so hard because you can't enjoy your food anymore. But you don't want to be diabetic and you don't want to have, um, you don't want to have um, high blood pressure. And that's what my friend told me. She goes, Beth, the doctor told me that I had, uh, I was borderline diabetic and I had, um, had blood pressure and I thought I'm not going to see my grandchildren, um, uh, you know, grow up and I'm, I'm dropping this weight and I respect her because I do have grandchildren and that has not been enough. I have a wonderful husband and that has not been enough. And I'm, you know, you kind of ask yourself, what's going to be enough? What's going to be the thing that makes you straighten up and fly right? That's what we say in the South, straighten up and fly right. But, uh, and we give ourselves excuses, and you see all these things, no excuses, just do it. Uh, all these different ads, and we all know that, but when are we gonna do that, you know? Usually it takes something bad, and I don't want that to have to happen. I don't wanna be made to be healthy because I had a health condition, you know? And I'm borderline just like she was. So I've got, my, blood, my high blood pressure came back and my doctor told me, well, that's because you've gained weight and it fat puts pressure on the vessels. So you do, and it puts pressure on the heart, around the heart. That's very dangerous. And also if you're not exercising the heart, it, it can atrophy just like any other muscle in your body. And if you are starting to feel weaker in your leg muscles and your back muscles and all this, that's a good sign your heart is getting there. So it's very important to turn it around. So today I was talking to my husband and I told him, I said, look, I need your help to do this. Um, you need to do it too. We both have, have gotten some weight back on us. You're going to have to have knee surgery. And so you need to lose weight too, so that you don't put so much weight on that knee when you're coming off surgery, because you're going to be sitting around, you'll just blow up like a balloon. And so I want you to be healthy. I think you're hot, sexy, no matter what size you are, but I, I do want you to be healthy and I love you and adore you. And I want to do it for myself and I want to do it for you. And maybe if we help each other and do it for each other as well as ourselves, we'll be more disciplined. I think it's always helpful when some, the people in your household are a part of it. I think when you're raising your kids, if you raise them to eat 
right in the first place, meaning you don't put those uh, junk foods out there for them. And I don't mean be so stringent that all they ever long for in life is to try a junk food because they've never had one. Don't make it be such a thing people long for. Like when kids are like, I can't wait till I'm 21 so I can drink alcohol. Of course, they're going to... I remember one way that my one of my dear friends growing up, her mother diffused that when she says, would you like to try alcohol? And she's like, well, I guess so, Mom. She goes, then you try it with me. And she gave her some, and she says, you're going to stay in this house, and I will be here for you so that you, you have a, you know, a drunk reaction, which alcohol raises your sugar so high that you do have a drunk reaction. And that's one of the ways that you know someone's sugar is out of control is if they act drunk. So that's what alcohol does is fermented sugar and um it will kind of make you woozy. And so she says, but it can be very dangerous, especially if you drive or if you cause your sugar to go up. So she explained it all to her almost like a scientific way. And I think she kind of destroyed any fun in it, which I think was good because she never looked forward to drinking. She didn't look forward to, um, you know, I won't say she won't ever have a glass of wine or she won't ever have some kind of an interesting little cocktail, but that's it. You know, she doesn't regularly drink. She doesn't have to drink. She does not look forward to drinking. So, I think you have to do the same thing with eating. That eating is something that keeps us alive. That also means that it can um, be something we look forward to doing. But that we can instill early in ourselves and our children, our spouses around us, agree to that we're going to do it in a healthy way. We're just not going to make it the thing to look forward to. So then it goes back to what is it you're looking forward to in life. And sometimes when you overeat, overdrink, you know, do things, drugs, and whatever that trying to um, make you feel happy, it's because you're using them the wrong way. And that's, that's the real problem. Why is it you're not happy without them? What do you feel like it's doing that's making you happy? Because it's temporary. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that make you feel good. Eating bunches of donuts, drinking some alcohol for a minute. You feel a little woozy and you forget your life problems, but then they come crashing down on you. Ask anybody who's been a drug addict. Yes, they felt wonderful while they were doing that drug, but then they had to have that drug and that drug owned them and it destroyed their life. So anyway, let's work together to develop some healthy habits together. And let's talk about what they are. And y'all tell me about your... Um, you know, some good habits you may have tried and things that um, did help you. Let's talk about the positives and see what we could do. Okay? Love you guys. Bye.